to our um our sisters and our friends and stuff and i just think yeah no nah. so i um, just want to acknowledge you first of all and say thank you for um for sharing your story with us and just quickly um for those who don't know me my my discord name is 22 twins so i have a twin sister she's in the discord as well um unfortunately because we've had to we had to reschedule due to um we had a cyclone here last Sunday, so we've had to reschedule for tonight. Um, mm-hmm. She runs heels classes, and so she's had to. Um, sh- she can't be a part of tonight's call, but um, yes, yeah, sh- usually she'll jump on just just on this one. But she is in the Discord under at twenty two Jen, um, and you'll yeah you'll see her around, and and you'll hear hear more from her um, in the not too distant future. Uh, another thing was, um, so this quarter all tonight, this this call will be mostly around women's health in terms of um, Queen Death sharing her story in relation to cervical cancer. And then after that, we'll touch on a condition, and um, she also has this condition as well. Um, I have it as well. And you may know someone who has it, and that is called endometriosis. So we thought, um, yeah, we'll bring that to light. We'll share some kind of insight in, into what that condition is. And just hopefully this um, sharing, again, will just, just help us. So I just want to welcome you to um, unmute Queen Daff and then, yeah, and introduce yourself and and uh, share your story with us. Oh, thank you for so, such uplifting um, words. That, oh. It lifted my heart 100%. I come on nervous. So, um, kia ora, my name is uh, Daphne. I'm 30 years old, grew up in Bondi while well, I was born in Aussie, grew up in Bondi, and my uh, papa goes back to Tawa North, and I also talk down to Mahia, so um, the Kahununu, or better known as the Romo Maiwahine. Um, that is my sub tribe that I. To go back to, I got three beautiful babies, um, 11 and a set of twins, they're eight, uh, one boy and one girl. And for work, I am a transport uh, allocator, so I supervise um, trucks making the deliveries, and I also help with setting up uh, uh, DCs, warehouses for the deliveries system, and also um, setting up and um, liaison with our uh, customers, making sure that uh, what they want in their system is um, put put to practical use and, you know, the dreams become reality, in other words. Um, and the other thing I want to say is that I am a survivor of ovarian cancer. So um, I've been in remission for about two months now. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to touch a little bit on that. So please call me up if you guys have any questions. Um, don't be scared to call out and ask anything along the way, and I will try to help as much as I can and answer as much as I can. So, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Queen. Um, so my story pretty much goes back to November 2020. Uh, I started having very, very real, very severe pains in my um abdominal, lower abdominal area, like right where um, my uterus was laying. I went into work one day feeling very weak and very nauseous, and I ended up actually fainting at work. And um, it was so, I was so lucky to um, have um, support here at work that actually came and broke down the door because they had thought I had fainted and hit my head. And they called the ambulance. And I went in the ambulance and um, I was told that I was just having, um, you know, um, period, what they had diagnosed as period cramps. But they kept me overnight for observation because obviously the pains were so severe that my blood pressure was dropping. Um, I was, ha- I had cold sweats. My temperature was high. So they wanted to make sure that nothing else was like uh, very severe with me. Um, I spent about two days in the hospital and they still had no idea what was going on and I went for everything and when I mean everything I went for every test I did bloods I did an um, internal um, 
examination and internal ultrasound, which is where they, you know, go up through your vagina, uh, vagina and they actually take pictures from inside. Um, I did an MRI and a CAT scan and um, they all came back with pretty much the same picture that nothing was really severely wrong with me. So um, they said that I had a few cysts on my ovaries, um, nothing to be worried about, but the pain continued. So they, uh, one of the gynecologists came up to me and goes, from a, uh, from a standpoint, what do you want me, what do you want us to do? How do you want us to help you? And I said to her, I just want you to tell me that it's more than just menstrual cramps. Like you guys are actually telling me that I, it's not just in my mind, that it's just period pain. And she's like, okay. So they offered me a laparoscopy, which is pretty much they make two little incisions in your um, stomach, about the same height as your belly button or, and just a little bit lower than that. And they um, go in with cameras. And um, they have a look at actually what's happening. So it's um, it's a very quick little procedure. It takes around about an hour, hour and a half that you're under. And um, they came back. And when I came to, um, they started talking to me about um, and what they then staged me as, as a severe case level four endometriosis. And they had taken samples of the cyst and the adhesion that were on my um on my tubes and also on my ovaries and they said they had sent them away for testing and a big wave of relief came over me because I didn't hear that c word because that they had only put me as an endometriosis um, case and they said look with uh, treatment and surgery everything should be good you know nothing should come out of this um, so uh, everything got cleared I got given some wickedly strong um, pain relief for all my pains and I was sent on my way about two days later. Um, I ended up back in hospital about four days after my surgery just with the same pains and no nothing was helping me, no pain relief they'd given me and they had given me like endone and like the real strong stuff like to take home. I even had a pen to take home that had um, oh, I forgot the thing that it had in it, but it, it, it was the only thing that was harming me. And um, I went back in, and the same gynecologist that had seen me in the hospital actually came in with an oncologist, which is the doctor. And she sat me down, and they said to me, uh, we have your test results back from the samples we took off your uterus lining and your fallopian tubes and also your ovaries. I said, okay. And they said, um, we hate to say this to you, but you actually have what they call endometriota sorry, endometriota carcindoma, which is um, a type of uh, ovarian cancer. And they and I was so shocked because um, my auntie had actually just passed away from uh, ovarian cancer. Sorry, that's very hard for me to say. She had lost her battle after. 10 years of fighting and she actually lost her battle to this cancer and I was and I sat there and they started to explain to me everything that I needed to start doing and the one thing I remember them saying to me was you are very lucky that you actually came through ER and pushed to have your laparoscopy done because mm. without it you would we would it would have been way worse because you are still in the early stages of this cancer this wow. is now what we say is curable you are a curable case of this cancer and they said to me and i remember how i felt when they said it they said if you had come in a month later daphne you would have been late stage one to early stage two uncurable cancer Wow. And that really put such a perspective on women's health, on such, like, I took, I was just going by, like, oh, this isn't, this, you know, when I was getting pains, I was like, oh, every woman goes through this, you know. It's got a yeah. hard time, you know, keep going. You know, went to the doctors and everyone kept telling me, 
it's just menstrual pain, you know, or we can help it. They put a, I ended up getting an IUD to help with the pain, you know, to stop bleeding and that. It didn't help. It actually made me a lot worse. Like my pains got so severe where it was taking the wind out of me. Like I felt that I was giving birth every time my cycle came around. Like I was laying on the couches. I I like, I was squatting in positions that I felt like I was trying to give birth, like my body was trying to get rid of something. Yeah, I, yeah, I've experienced that as well. Um, so if if you if you've never heard of uh, endometriosis before, or maybe some of you um, are listening and you have family who um, talk about the condition, uh, you may not know um, too much about it. Um, it can be a very excruciating um, condition, ASIS, like it's, it's so yeah. it debil- debilitating uh, at points. Mm. Mm. I, I just wanted to, man, that's like, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you, so, um, so prior to this hospital admission, um, had you, were you aware that you, you possibly had endometriosis were were you aware that um you know there could be a bit more going on like do do you recall maybe an age where you started experiencing some symptoms or um was it after you had your children um do you all kind of where it all kind of started maybe for you Uh, yeah so um I actually started like so we have to go pretty much way back now I actually started my period when I was about ten years old, so it's very. I was in a very. I was a very early, um, pubescent child. Yeah. Um. You know, I I I got my hits and my tits all before I was twelve, and you know, yeah. and I and I started and I became a woman and I bled for the first time when I was about. Yeah, I would say about ten because it was just it was about June just after my tenth birthday, so about ten and a half. Yeah. And I've always had heavy, heavy periods. So I never ever thought anything different. Like once I hit eighteen, I say about eighteen, I started to feel real pain about that time. And I was, uh, I had just had my oldest, and I think about that time was when I started to feel real pain. It was about two months after he was born, and every time, like even just um, intercourse was hurting me. You know, um, yep. certain times bowel movements were hurting me. Um, you know, going into certain positions were hurting me, like when I felt that pain. And it yep. was about 18. So after my kid, after my first kid, um, I had gone into the doctor and I was in Auckland at the time. And um, I went to the super center in Manukau. And I went there because um, they kept saying to me, oh, well, we can't treat you here at the clinic you need to go to the um to a like a, a specialist so um a gynecologist so i went to this gynecologist and they sat there and looked me in my eye and said it's nothing but period pain and in, in me and knowing my body and you know knowing everything that's been through the traumas everything that i had been through i kept saying to them no it has to be more but because you know you don't question you don't question the um specialists the people that know better the doctors and that you don't really question when they kind of tell you something that you know everyone else around them is just um repeating like it's like a rhetorical rhetorical like they just repeat repeat like it's just it's just pain it's just your period pain you know certain girls go through it you know and because I was in the biggest set I'm not massive but I am a bigger set girl like I have wide hips they said that it's it's normal. It is normal in girls that have babies early to feel this kind of pain after. It's your body trying to retract and become, you know, better. It's it's trying to get back to its normal state. Anyway, so mm-hmm. I thought to myself, you know, it's normal. It's it's just normal. And I lived through that pain from then, from yeah. after eighteen, so just before I was like just after having my first baby, until yeah. I got diagnosed. Oh man, I did exactly the same thing. And I think this is why having these conversations is so great because I went on for years to believe that excruciating pain was a normal part of having a period or because that's what we get told. 
often when we when we go to the doctors and you know there's even cases where girls are told uh, women are told that oh it's it's all in your head um just all this kinds of stuff around these certain conditions it can be quite hard uh to get proper diagnosis and actually diagnosis takes it can take up to 10 years um they did a study in ireland and they they said that the the lack of funding and the lack of kind of specialist care and treatment around endometriosis is actually criminal and it needs to change um so no sis thank you so much for um yeah just shedding light and sharing your stories so far um i think i'll just jump in and maybe um just give a description of what endometriosis actually is because that'll probably help our sisters here are listening in so if you don't know what endometriosis is um endometriosis is where the endometrial lining inside of the uterus grows in other places in the body so it grows outside of the womb um they don't know why all kind of like they, they, there's a few theories but unfortunately with endometriosis they don't have a significant understanding as to what actually causes it they have a number of theories um, and inside of those theories are things like genetics so if you have um, um, your mum or a family member who has endometriosis then uh, you are about seven to ten times more likely to uh, contract the condition um, and it's only a condition that affects wahine so um, if you have a womb then it can affect you and I say it like that because uh, you may be part of the rainbow community you may be transgender but you might still have your reproductive organs intact and so that means that in the, you can still uh, be affected by endometriosis and so they used to I think it's important to note as well that over the last 10 to 15 years um, there's been a lot of research, there's been a lot of advocating for awareness around um, endometriosis and so more people hear about it, more people go and get checked and it's really good. Um, unfortunately, there's still a lack of specialist care um, in, in terms of surgically removing lesions. So endometriosis is kind of like if you can think of having an ulcer in your mouth so you would have that in different parts, maybe inside of your, your uterus. Um, and then those little lesions would grow outside of the body. And in, in recent years, they've found that endometriosis, which was known to be just a um, more of a abdominal uterus type pelvic area um, condition, is now known to be a full body condition where they've been able to find lesions in places such as the spleen, um, your intestines, um, the nasal cavity, and as far as the brain. And this is huge break, a huge breakthrough for women who do uh, suffer from the condition because um, it's, yeah, because when you have it, it you go to the doctors and you're treated like it's a, a uterus issue, but unfortunately uh, it, was so much, it affects so much more than that. Um, mm. You can have chronic fatigue, but they, they've given it the name um, endo fatigue. And in my journey with endometriosis, it has been one of my bigger, bigger battles with the condition is um, you kind of just are wiped out some days. And I guess it is a chronic pain disorder as well. So therefore, any, any chronic pain disorders, um, they, you know, because you're in constant pain, you can imagine that that causes fatigue on its own. So, um, yeah, that that's why I guess it is a is a symptom of um of endometriosis. Um, I'll touch on some of the most common uh, classic symptoms, but bear in mind that these symptoms can be related to multiple things, and I think that's what makes this condition complex as well. Um, because you'll have, there's never going to be two exact the same cases. 
um, every everyone is different. And as um, Deaf Queen mentioned, she was at stage four, sis. Yeah, I have um, a case of severe stage four endometriosis, which means I actually have lesions on the back of my uterus walls that um, actually are sticking my bowel to certain mm. parts of the back of my uh, uterus. And I also have endometriosis in my intestine, so mm. um, in my stomach lining. So my stomach is actually also um, being drawn down towards my uterus through these lesions so yeah so I do have a quite a severe case um but through treatment and surgery hopefully I'll be able to but they don't know when I'll be going into surgery to be able to unstick my bowel and unstick my um, into, uh, stomach intestine from my uterus because it is quite a big and um dangerous kind of uh surgery so yeah everything you're saying is just, it, it's 100% perfect and correct but yeah I have what they say is a severe case. Right. And 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 when the sis talks about um sticky, like she's what happens with the condition, um and, and I'm not sure like you know, I'm sure there's other conditions that cause it, but with endometriosis where those lesions are, things can sort of it's like the lesions cause things to stick together uh, as the cyst is staying and uh, you can almost imagine it kind of all becomes fused at a point um, so it does get quite tricky and it causes a lot of um, problems internally so just to touch on some of the symptoms for um, you know for our own learning whanau um, some of the common ones are chronic pelvic pain um, abdominal pain, back pain, um, heavy heavy periods can be a, can be a symptom. Um, painful periods. Now, the sis has mentioned this one, but I just want to really reiterate that point. Um, it is not normal to have excruciating painful periods, and unfortunately, I didn't know this. I lived with this. I think I, my symptoms started from when I was fifteen years old. Um, and then it wasn't until my twin sister was giving birth to her first child and we were at the birthing centre and um, she was she was in labour, she's having a baby and I'm standing there telling her, it's okay, I totally understand the pain, I know what it feels like and she was looking at me like I was an absolute crazy person. She was like, what are you talking about, Oi? Like, what are you, what are you literally talking about? And I was like, Oh, no, like, you know, when you get those sharp pains and they, like, shoot up your bum and, you know, down the front, it's sore, eh? And she just looked at me like I was absolutely nuts. And she goes, that's not normal. And I was like, what do you mean it's not normal? I always get it. And she's like, it's not normal. You need to go and get checked. And then she, while she's contracting and breathing through her <laughs> labor pains, she gets my mum and my sister to come and talk to me. So they come over and they're like, what's you know what's this about and I said oh just get you know all of these pains and they're like you need to go and get checked and that was the first time a light bulb came on for me and I realized oh okay uh, I think I need to go and get checked and it's not normal um, and it took for my sister to be giving birth for me to actually have that moment of realization so I just want to uh, reiterate that that it's not uh, no, like it's like cramps and a little bit of pain now and then but if you are experiencing anything more than that then go and get checked it can be for a number of reasons um yeah but but i would advise you to to definitely get checked um some more symptoms could be pain during intercourse um pain during peeing um pain with bowel movements, you can experience constipation, bloating, and even infertility, um, as well as na nausea and vomiting. So those are some, some um, classic symptoms. It is a wide subject, so probably won't be able to like um, answer all of your questions, but just thought that we would put that in there. Um, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to unmute and we'll take a couple and then I'm going to pass it back to Queen Daph to um to finish off her, her story. Hey 
Jake has a slander. Lanes, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah. Can you hear me? It might be my reception. I can hear you. Ah, uh, hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. That's the first time I've actually heard that full blown story about you. <laughs> but I, I knew, I knew, yeah. but I didn't really like the full story. Yeah. You're so strong. Both of you guys. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, my question was, I was just wondering, this particular um, um, subject that we're talking about, can this be picked up in a regular smear? You know how we're always encouraged to like smear every two years. Is that something that would pick this up or no? Okay, so I'll speak to um, Endo in my own experience. Um, so I've had a smear where my smear has come back showing um, abnormalities in regards to the endometrial, uh, endometrial uh, cells. So um, I'm not sure if that gives them enough indication to, to state that it's endometriosis, but I have had in my own experience and I've only had that once, um, where it's come back with that kind of information. So that leads me to believe that smears are beneficial and just because that's what they're for, eh? picking up any abnormalities. So, yeah, I can't say if that's fact, but from my own experience, I do believe that um, it can help. And maybe Deaf Queen could speak. Um, maybe she has a bit more kind of insight to that. Yeah, so kia ora. Thank you for the question. Um, so, yeah, like the Queen um, just said, that um, the pap smear usually will always um, pick up abnormalities. So, my English is so bad. Abnormalities throughout from our downstairs area and like I say you should always be pap smeared like always go be regular with it because it actually helps detect stuff early so um with me because I was in such early early stages of um this uh, ovarian cancer I was actually not able to be, be picked up on the scale it was for cancer but I did um just as the queen said I was also picked up for um, traces of endometriosis but in stating that we're also um, told that um, early stages of endometriosis um, you can't really uh, cure or treat that only with medication it's nothing um, similar so when I was growing up and I had that and it came up it was just like oh it's just showing you that um, you're gonna, you've got a bigger set uterus there's a few things happening in the lining nothing to be worried about. So to me, when I was hearing that from a doctor, you know, I was like, oh, well, it's just something I've got to kind of pick up and keep going with. It's part of being a woman. So, um, yeah, it, I do say that a pap smear, you should always get your pap smear done at two years. Every two years, um, it should. it's always going to pick up abnormalities. And, um, yeah, but for my case, it didn't pick up because I was still in, early early stages and i had only just done it a year before um all of this had happened so i hope that helps a little bit and gives you a bit more clarity on that girl your english is fine and thank you so much you you answered my question thank you awesome cuz good question um any other queens want to ask anything Don't be shocked. We're here to help you where we can give you guys some more awareness. Okay, cool. So I'll just pass it back to you, Def. Um, 
and uh, maybe you can yeah I, I know we got to the point of um we did a little bit of pre pre-diagnosis uh, we got into the point of the hospital visit um where they gave you the news um maybe so what what was it like from that point i know it can't have been easy um how quickly did did they move you towards um, a treatment plan? Um, how how fast did things progress from there? Um, so pretty much that day they told me I was presented my treatment plan. I was presented my options. I was told that I needed to do a lot more testing. Um, I was then sent to um, a woman's health care that um, deals with both uh, cancer and endometriosis um, in, a, um, in Westmead Hospital. They also do the breast um, breast cancer care there as well. So it's a good little hub to be a part of. So I was sent there, did all my testing um, they needed me to do, um, was then diagnosed with very early stages and told that um, pretty much what they're going to do is they're going to give me uh, a hormonal treatment. So I didn't at that time need radiation, but I did get a hormonal treatment that helped to actually stop the growth of my cells, my cancer cells. So it slowed them right down so they weren't able to reproduce, uh, like to produce more and more of them. Um, it was able to stop it kind of in its tracks. Um, in saying that, they did tell me that it only had a 40% chance of working in that way. Um, it was either going to stop the cancer cells or it was going to help, it was going to fuel fuel it to grow more. So um, they did tell me it was very, uh, very 50-50, well, 40-60 on what was going to happen. But they did tell me that um, it would try to keep, they would try to keep me off the road of chemotherapy, which is the place I didn't want to go to. Um, the reason for that um, was my own reasoning. Um, I still wanted to have, I still do want to have another bed there in the future. I mean, I still, I am only 30. I know my kids are quite growing now, but um, that's something that I personally wanted. Um, I did talk to my oncologist and the gynecologist and I told them my wants and my future goals. And they said, okay, then this is the plan we're going to go with. So, yeah, it was pretty much on that day. They handed me a plan. They talked to me. Um, they asked me, do I need moral support? So I called my partner. He came down and we started to talk about it. And, and we started to piece together every, all the plans that we needed. So, yeah, pretty much within a week, I was already, I had already completed all the tests they needed me to do. I had done my first dose of um, Provera which was the hormonal treatment I was on, which is um, um, proteins. Um, it's an injection that you actually get. It's cleared through a drip. And um, that was actually the way I did it because I was already had an um, IUD, a marina, in me. Um, it actually helped with uh, stopping that cell, um, that cancer cell um, a lot more quickly. Um, I did have to do a few treatments of spot radiation where it's where you go and lay in the, um, it's a very big machine, you lay down and they just um, target that one area pretty much. And then I was advised that I would need surgery on that area. So everything moved very, very, very quickly. And I'm so thankful, like 100% thankful that um, I was able to have that kind of road for treatment. Because I had seen my auntie kind of go through chemo and I just didn't know if I'd be able to do it with my kids. Um, being the, being, uh, me being a mama, I wanted to be there for my kids more than anything. So when they said to me, I don't think you need to do chemotherapy, and I stated I don't want to do chemotherapy, um, therapy, they pretty much took me down a whole new road. And yeah, within about two months, in, I was told, okay, this is the date for your surgery and this is how it's going to go. So it was very fast, very efficient. And um, yeah, to this day, um, I don't need chemo. I do have to go on for radiation. 
but um, I am on the mend from everything that's been happening for about a yeah, for about a couple of months now. So hope that kind of clears clears that little part. You make me so proud. <laughs> I just have to say that, like, you make me so proud because, um, you know, we we sometimes, and I've just can only share from my own experience, like. I left it for so long and you make me proud that you went and like I've been in positions where I've been to the hospital and they're like look you've been here four times already we understand that you're in pain but there's nothing more that we can do for you um things like that and sometimes I've really had to fight I've had to use my voice I've had to push and um you know I've had to really argue the point that you can't, like, I can't be left like this. I, I want a better treatment plan. And so that's why I say that because um, for women who, like, there's, there's so many, like, you know, the way I look at it is things could be worse as well. So I'm, I'm grateful for, um, I'm grateful for everything that I've learned. And I'm grateful that I don't have it worse. But at the same time, um, for women in our positions, it's it's sometimes just really hard to even get a level of understanding, and that's even from uh, medical professionals. So I just want to acknowledge you for that, and um, I guess you know how you've just shared that you you know what treatment you do want to experience and what treatment you don't want to experience and for what reasons. Um, and I really admire that. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. Uh, thank you. And yeah, um, just you saying that, like you have to voice your opinion, like your needs and your wants, I've got to say it, and we kind of said it at the beginning of the session, is that women's health, especially in the sector of endometriosis or anything to do around, um, not just around cancer, but just any kind of pain down there, it's it's not normal. And But it's there's such a little, there's like little to none um, bedside manners for um women who are just ah, oh, it's just it's just period pain like you know they they brushed it off so quickly when you're in pain but the one thing i want to tell you queens is you know you know your body better than anyone else out there knows your body you know the way your body functions you know the way your body feels you know the pain you know so if you're in that pain and you have a medical like person in front of you telling you no, that's not what you're feeling. Speak up, tell them no, that's not you. You don't know what I'm feeling. I know what I'm feeling. This is what I want, and I want you to help me down this path. If you can't help me, find someone who can help me. Find someone who's going to come in here and tell me, okay, we had a look, and it is a little bit more severe than we first thought this is what we can do for you because I guarantee if you just let them walk out and say to you it's just period pains it's just in your head it's just you know it's it's nothing you sh there's nothing we can do for you you're going to be feeling that pain 10 times harder down the road and I just want to let you know that sometimes we have to be our own advocate sometimes we have to scream and shout and chuck that tantrum for someone to look in our direction and say she's in real pain, like you can see it. Why aren't what helping her? So that's just my I put out there, and like I'm so glad, Queen, that you you voiced it and you said to them, no, I'm in pain. I need that help, and it's something that I had to do as well. Like they were trying to kick me out of the hospital after I just got in there through an ambulance, like. Saying it was just, it's just your period, it's just your menstrual cycle, you know, it's nothing that we can really treat for you. Until they finally said to me, okay, you've been in here, you're not going to leave, obviously. So the next thing we can do to you is to do the laparoscopy. And through that, I found out that I had not only endometriosis at a severe case level, 
but I also had early stage cancer. So I say to you, queens, know your body. If you're in pain and you need to feel and you and you feel like you're being, you know, brushed aside, find someone who's going to help you. Speak your voice. Let them know that you're not going anywhere until they find out what's actually wrong for you. Sorry, went on a bit of a rant there. No, it's great. It's so important. It's um, it's so bloody important. Like, yeah, and like everything that you said, it's 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 a hard thing to do. Things like it is, and it's it's a hard thing to do. Like um, to kind of just stare in the face of, <laughs> you know, the people who are are there to treat you and tell them that what they're saying to you is wrong. That's not an easy thing to do. Um, but you know, your health is that important. And as the sister said, like, if she didn't do that, if she had just walked out of the hospital, went home, um, maybe it might have been, you know, as she said, a month later and it would have been too late to catch her early. Um, yeah, because as we all know, when it comes to health prevention is our our best bet. But um, to be honest, yeah, your voice, your voice, and intuition, as she's saying, um, when I was younger, so I started experiencing symptoms um, when I was, yeah, I think, I think I'd think i had my first sort of botting, or I wouldn't really call it a period, uh, around the same time. So 10 years older was just like, I was just like, oh, what the heck is this? But it wasn't actually a period, but just from 10 years old to 15 years old, I'd notice these little kind of like tummy pains and stuff. I never paid it too much attention. And when you're that young, you don't really know. Um, then from 15 to to 19, um, over that time, it progressed and it got worse. And then that's when I started to notice like, oh, like my periods are really painful. Some days I couldn't get up for a week, um, which I thought was odd. And I'd met my partner around that same time. Um, me and myself, I'd never really had a, like a partner, a boyfriend, a real boyfriend. So, you know, uh, intimacy wasn't really, like I didn't have an experience in terms of um, pain around intercourse and things like that to relate it to. So with my partner um, and, and like just growing and, and getting to know my own body at that age around 19, 20, I didn't actually have an understanding of what was normal, what was not kind of thing. Um, and so it wasn't at all, I was maybe 20 where um, I went to the doctors and I started voicing that um, I have really painful periods and, and some days I can't stand and I'll go to the toilets, too painful. Um, and then they started to check me out from there, and I think I was diagnosed at 22, which is a which is a short diagnosis period. Um, quite uncommon with these conditions; it usually takes a lot longer. But uh, I was, yeah, I was really lucky in that sense. Uh, so I was diagnosed at 22, um, and at that time, when I is it laparoscopy I think it is that's when they put a camera and they just make two small incisions into your abdomen one is for a camera to see around and check for lesions uh, and anything else and then the other one is for the instruments tools to um, either be able to take biopsies or or remove the lesions and stuff like that um but yeah after I think after I came out of the, the surgery, um, they kind of just told me, oh, we've inserted a marina, which is a IUD, um, and you have endometriosis. And that was it. Like, I didn't receive much information on what endometriosis actually was. Um, so from the age of 22 till today, I'm going to be 34 next week, um, I have done all my own research. I have... Um, had to find out a lot in those first years for myself um, what the condition actually, you know, was and all that kind of stuff. But now um, there's so much awesome support networks. There's um, You can sign up to 
uh, things like it's called my endometriosis team and it's sort of like this this called here um, there's so much information that you can tap into there's articles like new articles every day um, you're able to get a lot of support you can ask questions you can find people in your location you can meet up um, there's so much awesome awesome things like that now that wasn't around um, when I first got it so it was quite a scary thing but now um, yeah it's it's so awesome to see that um, there's there's all of this awareness and um, support um, I guess this, if you have anything further to to add to your story um, any any last pieces of advice um, yeah Um, the one thing I just want to kind of give out and just a shout out just to you, Queen, for reaching out and, you know, um, actually wanting to have this talk. Like, this talk can be, um, quite confronting for a lot of women, um, because, you know, you don't really want, you don't really want it to be as bad as, as your pain is. And all I can say for you is, out like all of us queens out there is just be aware be aware of the symptoms you know have a look you, you know you might not have the symptoms but you might know someone that's going through them that's not diagnosed so just be aware you know maybe just read it up on the internet just check out what it is you know just monitor yourself and yeah just um early detection is the best um is the best way to protect ourselves so you know keep up with your pap smears make sure that you know you're up to date with those i know they're a bit invasive and a bit scary because i never liked doing them but i just wish that maybe if i had done it a little bit maybe i would have caught it you know in there but um the other thing i just want to say is that um i just hope that all of you take a little bit of you know knowledge from this for it all and you know just have a look at your own your own symptoms and go get checked. And even though I said, oh, you know, you've got to kick and scream and say that they're wrong, I know that it can be very daunting um, to step to a medical professional that way. Um, but, you know, we advocate for our kids, for our parents, for our partners, you know, for our friends. And this time around, I just want you to advocate for yourselves and, you know, be your your own advocate and know that when you stand up for someone else and you face that stuff head on that's what you need to be doing when you when you have your own checkup and your own health at risk um other than that no thank you all for letting me share my story um and i hope it helps you guys in some way so yeah kia ora. awesome queen awesome um but yeah i guess if anyone would like to unmute maybe you you've come up with a question uh, we might be able to answer it um, or if you have any feedback of how um, helpful you might have found this this call um, or anything like that I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes if you guys want to share a little bit um, I had a question um, thank you, Queens, for sharing. It's been very helpful. Um, just one question um, for Daphne, was, which was, have you changed anything in your lifestyle since um, being in remission? Yeah, um, there's been a lot of changes I made in my life um, because of it. And um, it wasn't as the people told me, oh, you need to do it, but it felt in myself that um, I couldn't eat certain foods and to this day I'm still finding it hard to go back to um, certain foods which I'm, I'm grateful for so I actually eat a lot more um, fresh greens and um, I actually uh, like more raw veggies than like cooked, boiled or baked um, so I think the one thing that's actually I've changed in my life is my eating habit and um, yeah it was just a reflection from when I was doing my treatment I couldn't eat certain foods and um, it actually made me feel better to be eating more veggies, more um, fruit. Than, and I actually cut dairy out. And it wasn't because they told me to. It was just because that's what my body was wanting me to do. 
So yeah, that's probably the biggest um, thing that changed and that was my eating habits, which is good. Like it, I needed to do it. Wow, I love that. Um, I've got some females in my in my life that uh, auntie passed away from ovarian cancer, and I've got a cousin with endometriosis. So, I um, really appreciate and acknowledge um, what you ladies are going through and and what you've been able to um, come through, come out of. So, um, it's just been very empowering to um, just get that confirmation, that validation tonight that. Um, it's really important to just take ownership of your health and speak up. Oh, kia ora, sis. Yeah, um, that's the one thing I really wanted to implement in some hack was speak up and know your pain, know your body. And, you know, um, like I kept saying, and I'm going to keep repeating it, advocate for yourself. Make sure that your health is important because if you have babies and a partner and whanau around, your health needs to come first because if your health is deteriorating to a certain point where you're laying on a couch crying in pain, it affects them as well. So just know that when you're looking after yourself, you're also looking after your partner. So yeah, no, sure. Sure. thank you. Sweet. Any other um any other feedback or questions just before we uh, wrap it up? Sweet. Okay. Cool. Cool queens. Well, that was massive. Um, just like to acknowledge you all for your time. Um, that you've come and joined, joined in with us. Um, I know both Deaf Queen and I. Just our only hope is that you got something out of it, and and um, you know, that may even be able to prevent or just encourage you to get yourself checked or encourage your whanau to get checked and things like that. Um, that was the whole purpose of this call. And I hope that, um, <clears throat> yeah, I hope that that has encouraged you to, to um, yeah, just to really own kind of your our, our woman's health, I'll, I'll say, um, and be less afraid of things like smears. Um, sorry, this message just popped up. And yeah, just be encouraged to kind of um, to go to the doctors and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, it's the best thing that you can do, really. But yeah, I, I think that's us for tonight. I'm so grateful to um, have been able to share alongside the sis. Um, I, my, my twinny couldn't be here because she's got a heels class on. I really wish that I could take the camera like and show you guys. It's so lit, so fun. Um, I might have to do that one time. So after I jump off here, um, I'm going to go in. Um, I always help out with her heels classes, but I'm going to go and check her out. Maybe I'll I'll post some videos into the arch chat or somewhere, and you guys can have a little watch and uh, see what that's all about. Um, the other thing before I go, um, she so my twin sister Jen, she's a beauty therapist, and I know there was a lot of Queen's asking for maybe skincare um, sort of advice and stuff like that. So what I was thinking is um, if you guys are interested, or you Queen, sorry, uh, interested, we could do another chat like this uh, maybe next week sometime. And any of you who maybe work in beauty or anything like that, if you guys want to join, then um, I know you can just – at me or at Jen22 or our beautiful queen moderators um, that you'd like to be a part of that and maybe we can, I'm not sure what day but we'll figure it out and yeah, but otherwise I leave you with so much um, aroha, I leave you with so much hope and I just yeah, I just want to send you all good vibes 
And that's it from me. Taki to queens. Bye, queens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kia ora.